worship Good evening and welcome to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. I am Pastor Monique Somers and we greet you in the joy of Jesus Christ. We thank you for joining us on tonight for our Advent meditation. We are using for our guide, the Advent Prophecy and Expectation, a guide for meditation and action 2020, which was published by the AME Church Publishing House with contributing authors from the Christian Education Department, from the AME Zion, the CME and the AME Church. We are happy on tonight and delighted that again, you have joined us and we do have a presenter tonight who will come in her own way to present the meditation. It is none other than the presiding elder of the Tuskegee District and the Ninth Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Reverend Dr. Letitia Watford. 
she will come to us in her own way to present this meditation. I simply ask that we would all give her your undivided attention as she leads us tonight in this moment of meditation. Elder Watford, we're ready. Good evening, everyone. I'm so delighted to be with you tonight on this, the next to the last night of Christmas Tide, um, to help us explore uh, the devotional for this evening, which is entitled Calling the Least. The text is taken from Judges 6, verses 11 through 16, and the uh, and first for emphasis is that of Judges 6.15. He responded, but sir, how can I deliver Israel when my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family? Um, this is a very familiar text. Uh, and as the writer for tonight, uh, Dr. Garland Pierce states, God's ways are not our ways. And as is often the case, um, God will seek the one who deems him or herself the weakest in order that he might show himself strong. Uh, I've viewed all of those on the line with us on the Zoom call tonight. And so I know that this is a very familiar passage for each of us. And so I won't go through that aspect of the devotion. I'll leave that um, for your study later uh, if, you, if need be. I wanna talk a little bit tonight about it's a light thing. It's a light thing. Again, tomorrow night is going to culminate uh, the series of meditative moments that have spanned the liturgical seasons of Advent and the 12 days of Christmas. And I'm really hopeful that you all still have up your Christmas lights because Christmas doesn't end until tomorrow. That is because the culminating event for Christmas is the Feast of Epiphany. Epiphany has a twofold uh, goal. It is to commemorate the Magi or the wise men's visit to the baby Jesus, as well as the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. Um, taken literally or by definition, an epiphany is a sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something. It is an intuitive grasp of reality. It is an illuminating discovery, realization or disclosure. In the comics, or if you like the funny pages, you always know when a character has an epiphany because there's a light bulb above their head. And more often or not, more often than not, the word aha will appear in the speech balloon. So I need somebody to say with me tonight, uh, it's a light thing, this epiphany, it's a light thing. It's a light thing. Thank you. <laughs> I knew somebody would be bold enough to come off mute and do that. Uh, I have found it perfectly fitting uh, that in each of the meditations this week, beginning uh, with Sunday, a careful read of the biblical text have, have of any of those biblical texts have implications that point to this light thing. On Sunday at Luke 4, 14 and following, we had the preacher Jesus returning to his hometown with a message he rendered in the synagogue that was rooted in a text founded Isaiah 61 verses one through two. The text references one who is anointed and appointed called to proclaim the good news to the poor, the captive, the blind, the oppressed, as well as to announce the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus averes um, that he is the very fulfillment of that text. And verse 22 recounts the aha moment 
for all of those who were watching and listening that day. It was a light thing. Jesus, they understood, was the promised light of the world sent by God to us to lead us from the path of darkness into the light of the Father. And then on last night at Exodus 3, verse 1 and following, it was Moses who was actually drawn by the light of a fire to a bush that would not burn up. The adoptive son of royalty, a prince in his own right, uh, Moses was called by God to go down to Egypt to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. Now, with God's assurance that God will be with him, Moses will be used by God to deliver the Israelites out of 400 years of darkness into the marvelous light of liberation. Moses was a type and shadow of Jesus, the promised light of the world, sent by God to lead us from the path of darkness into the light of the Father. And so now tonight, at Judges 6, verses 11 through 16, we have Gideon self-described as the least among the weakest. We had Moses, the prince in his own right, royalty. And tonight we have Gideon, the least among the weakest. Yet God is calling Gideon to liberate the Israelites from the oppression of the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the other Eastern peoples who had invaded the Israelite land to ravage it. Despite Gideon's reservations and with God's assurance that God will be with him, God will use Gideon and the smallest possible number of soldiers to ravage the enemies of the Israelites. Dr. Pierce says in our meditation tonight that Christmas comes to remind us that God came to us as weak and among the least. He came to us as weak and among the least, a babe in a manger so that those who walk in darkness might see the light of the world. I'm telling you y'all, it's a light thing. Light is the symbol of life, happiness, and prosperity, whereas darkness is the symbol of chaos, death, and evil. Darkness is the absence of light. Martin Luther King Jr. once famously said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Jesus is the light of the world. And those of us who follow after Jesus are called from wherever we are, from whatever is our standing. We are called to do our part to mitigate darkness. Whether we be royalty in our own right or the least among the weakness, the weakest, it's still a light thing. And this is the amazing thing about light. It is that any light, no matter how small the light, when introduced to darkness, necessarily dispels darkness because darkness is the absence of light. The song said, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine because there is this knowledge, this epiphany, this awareness, this aha, that no matter how small we may perceive our life to be. 
If our light shows in darkness, then darkness is no more. There's not one of us on this Zoom call tonight who dare to follow after Jesus. There's not one of us on the call tonight who cannot be used by God to lead others from the path of darkness into the light of the Father. Let that be our epiphany tonight. Let's let our light shine, whether big or small, so that all who see that light pointing the way to the one who came to set us free from sin and bondage. Let's use our light to point any and all to the way of the one who came to set us free from sin and death. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. It's the light thing, y'all. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. Thank you, Elder Watford, for sharing with us and reminding us that it's a light thing and that God is calling even in this text on tonight the least. And so it's good news to be reminded that even a little light coming into a dark place can dispel the darkness. And so I thank you for the word of encouragement on tonight. And when you said the least of these, the weakest of these, I thought about the scripture that says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And so I say to us on tonight, as she has already uh, spoken, and I think when she last ministered to our church, her granddaughter sung, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And so I say to us on tonight, whether you have a big light or a small light, let your little light shine. And it just might make the world of difference in somebody else's life. And so we give God praise tonight for your presence and for your participation. We have been eagerly just awaiting this moment. I have just rejoiced in the Lord to see how this year, this Advent meditation just have grown and grown and grown in the weeks that we have been participating since November 29th. And here we are almost on the last uh, night of the Advent meditation to see all the presenters and the marvelous job that all of them have done, allowing God to use them by way of the Holy Spirit to speak to us on tonight. And so I'm encouraged. I pray that all who are listening are encouraged. And if someone is listening tonight who have not Receive Jesus Christ, the light of the world, as your Savior and Lord, that this will be the night that you will say, I, I want that light. And if you have turned away from that light and, and backslid, and I pray that this meditation will be the one that will cause you to say, no, I still got a little wick. I got, I got a light and I want it to shine for Jesus. And then for all of us who are, are saved and was ready like I was to receive this word, that we have been edified and built up. And so we give God all the praise and all the glory for the great things that he has done in these moments of meditation. And so on tonight, I do see we have a number of participants that are online with us. Um, Elder, I will yield the floor back to you if you have any additional remarks before I recognize some of our participants um, that are with us. Um, no, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. It's a, just a joy to be in the midst. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And I would uh, also at this time like to recognize some of our Episcopal leadership for women in ministry. We have with us uh, the Reverend Maddie Edwards, who is our second vice president, uh, the Reverend Debbie Dowdell, who is our secretary and treasurer. Uh, the Dr. Clementine Warren, who is also with us, who is our worship leader, and Reverend Loretta Fuller, who is the Northeast Alabama Conference um, Coordinator for Women in Ministry. We thank God for your presence on tonight, and if 
any of those leaders would like to um, give a word of commendation or encouragement, uh, we yield the floor to you at this time if you would simply unmute your lines so that you could speak. If there are none, um, go ahead. Amen. We just want to give God praise for the word that we heard on tonight. But truly, it was an awesome word. Now, my soul is the better because of what I have heard. And I just say to God, be the glory and thank you for having this meditation last week and ending up on Wednesday of tomorrow <laughs> night. I look forward to tomorrow night. Thank you, Elder. You have truly blessed my soul. Man, thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. The lines are on mute, Doc. Good evening. Go ahead, Dr. Warren. Okay, I guess that's all who would like to give uh, words at this time. Um, I believe my sister was on, um, who was the presenter on last night, uh, Pastor Kathy. We thank all of you who have um, dialed in to join us on tomorrow night. We will have uh, our Bishop, Bishop Harry L. Seawright, who will do the closing meditation. We invite all of you to come back for the closing meditation. I just believe we're going higher and higher and this will be the climax. Um, and so if, if you can, please dial back in, tell somebody uh, about the meditation and invite them to come in to join us, whether on Zoom, Facebook Live or a conference call. And again, we thank you. We will close out now with a closing prayer if our hearts and minds are clear. Following the prayer, we will have a closing selection. We ask that you will remain with us as we play the final selection. I pray on tonight also by Garland Pierce is as follows. God, I don't know why you look to the weakest and why you look to the least for leaders and for fighters. But here am I. If you can use anything, Lord, use us. In the name of Emmanuel, God with us, do we lift up this prayer on tonight. And God, we just ask that you will continue to allow all believers all over this land to continue to let their light shine. And God, remove away any stigma that we may place on ourselves thinking that we are the weakest or that we are the least right. or someone else is bigger or someone else is better. Right. Oh God, but let us be used by you right. to allow the light that you have placed on the inside of us to shine bright for you, oh God. Right. And we'll be careful, dear Heavenly Father, yeah. to always give you all the honor yeah. and all the glory yeah. and all the praise that you deserve. God, we thank you for those participants who have participated thus far in these meditations. We thank you for everyone who thought it not robbery to dial in, to join us on Zoom or Facebook Live or conference call, or who would listen later even on YouTube. We thank you for technology. We thank you for your word going forth. You said it will go forth and not return to your void, but would accomplish that which you sent it to do. And so we give you praise right now for your word being a word that is a purpose word that does accomplish everything that you sent it to do. And so God, we give you praise on tonight. We love you tonight. We pray for everyone under the sound of my voice tonight. You know what we all stand in need of. Yeah. And we simply ask, oh God, that you meet the needs of your people if it be your holy and divine will. And again, God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, our resurrected Savior, yeah. do we pray this prayer. And every believer said, amen, amen. 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 At this time, we will have our closing 
selection, and then we'll come back together as a group if you would remain on the Zoom call as the media minister will provide us with a song at this time. Praise God. We give God praise. We'll never know how much it costs to see our sins upon that cross. And so we ought to get excited for what God is doing. And so we give God praise on tonight for this Advent meditation. We're praying for tomorrow night as we climax with Bishop Seawright. I pray that everyone has been blessed. 
and touched in some shape, form, or fashion that these Advent meditations have not, have not been in vain. Hallelujah. And so we continue to give God praise for all that he has done, is doing, and will continue to do as long as we walk in obedience. And so I thank you again on tonight, Elder Watford. I thank all of you who have dialed in on Zoom and everyone who is listening, however you decided to join this Advent meditation. Remember, you have a light, so let it shine. Let it shine. If there are no other comments, this will bring this Advent meditation to a close on tonight.